Welcome to Ish I Saw on TikTok. In this series, we look at TikToks and some stitched responses where something very prevalent in dating today is discussed. Then finally, I'll provide my commentary at the end of just me being myself, unfiltered and unadulterated. Hi, I'm Janelle, the relationship coach behind the Successful Invisible. I work with successful, savvy, wonderful, professional black women, single professional black women who are 35 plus and are seeking just better dating options and have no clue where to start. Check out my links below if you're interested in working with me one-on-one or in a group coach setting. The goal of exploring some of these TikToks is to spark discussion and help you to develop more awareness, including self-awareness, in some of the patterns you've either engaged in or allow in your own dating life. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Ladies, this is how you know if a man that you're dealing with is on the low. I'm about to tell you. If you go on a date with a guy and y'all order drinks, and he take the straw, he drink out the straw, like this. he on the low, no cap, you gotta cut him off. Anytime a man order a drink, he supposed to take the straw out of the drink and toss that shit across the room, hit somebody's head, bow, no cap. He ain't supposed to be drinking out no straw, no. He supposed to be drinking that shit like a man, Ugh, no cap. Signs that your man is on the down low. Why you think men said they paying so far down to show their butt? They're promoting their butt to other men that like their butt. They ain't showing it to no woman. A woman ain't looking at that. A woman look for something else. Unless he trying to let his butt air out because his butt been played with by his boyfriend. And some of these men have sleepovers. A bunch of guys. What do you think they doing? They all intoxicated. Somebody going to start showing feelings. You'll be surprised how many men sleep in the bed together. Talking about that, my bro. He like family. They even walk around each other with boxers on. That's my man's. He really saying that's it, man. They trying to change the word, make it seem like they just friends. It's a man friend. Bros over O's. That tells you everything when a man say that. It's men over women. These men love being around each other talking about women. They don't talk about each other. They giving each other what they want from each other. Mm. A lot of these men that talk about women every day, they like men. They never said that wrong about a man. Everything a man do is right. I'm telling you, ladies, you got to watch yourself because these men be sneaking with other men. Why you think they love each other so hard? Think about it. Your man might be on the down low if he do this. If he complain about how you look every day, your lips, your lashes, your hair, your body, it seems like he ain't competition with you. He feel like you look better than him. You know what I'm saying? You happier. You know what I'm saying? You proud of yourself. He feeling bad about himself. He don't like nothing about you. When you feeling bad, he feel like he winning because you ain't in front of him. He wants you behind him. And every time that man call, he run. Why would he run for another man when he can't run for you? Something about that man that he like. Every night they hanging together. Every night they talking. He telling that man all this business. Every time y'all argue, every time y'all fuss, your sex life and everything. His homeboy know more than you do. Everything. And that homeboy gonna make sure y'all don't get alone. So when y'all break up, that homeboy can have them all to itself. Happily ever after. Any man that talks bad about women all day is on the down low. I'm just saying, the true hurt. Just to be clear, this video is about DL men. I'm not really a specialist when it comes to DL women, but I'm pretty sure, you know, um, some of these signs probably, you know, work hand in hand. I don't know, but you know, I am, what I will say, I will be specifically talking about DL men. I will be talking about the signs and the types. All right, so let's get straight into it. Now, the first thing, the first signal, I'm just gonna start with something, you know, people always say, and then sometimes I'm gonna sprinkle in my personal signs and what I notice over some time. First things first, if the person is homophobic. Now, it's uh, different from when you just don't understand. It's different from when you know you are just be like, okay, that's what you do, but I'm not with that. 
is different. I'm talking about the extreme homophobe. I'm talking about every time they see a gay person, they get uncomfortable. Every time they see a gay person, you know, they gotta bash them, talk bad about them. That's, that's the type of homophobe that I'm referring to. The ones that would beat up, dehumanize, do all of those things. Now, keep in mind too, with these signals and stuff like that, if you see one, one of these signals that I am talking about, you can't just be like, oh, oh, you're DL. No, no. But however, if you get like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these signals simultaneously at the same time, or even you've noticed them over some time, then yeah, you just might have a case, just so you guys know. Um, yeah, so if he's homophobic, you know, that is a big sign because nine times to ten, if you're, like, like people say all the time, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first video you've seen talking about this. If you're uncomfortable with who you are, especially if the person's not trying to come on to you or trying to, you know, flirt with you after you've told them no, you should be good. There's nothing to be homophobic about. Go about your business. Now, the second thing we have, now this is something I've noticed over some time. Um, the girlfriend is too bad. Now, when I say bad, she's bad. I'm talking about A1 top notch bad bitch. That's what I'm referring to. Because and this this is what I've noticed is that when you have a dude or whatever, you know, and he may be a certain caliber, and then you look at his girl, his girlfriend, his wife, and she is bad. She's a bad bitch, not bitch, B B I H. And the reason why I say that, because I, for me, I've dealt with a couple of dudes that were DL or whatever. Story times on that. And the thing is that they would have really bad, like bad biz. Not bitches, but biz. And stuff like that. So when it comes to a situation of when people be like, oh, you know, he's not gay. Look at his girlfriend. One thing I can tell you. The trade... They love them a good facial hair. They love them a good facial hair. They love them them beards. And baby, you just might be a beard. Now, don't get confused with what I'm saying beard because they're not there are not always gay men that have girlfriends. Closeted gay men that have girlfriends. There are sometimes bisexual men that are attracted to men and women has a girlfriend, but however, the girlfriend is not aware that he's attracted to men. That happens. So sometimes you may not be a beard. Sometimes, you know, he may be have other sexual attractions that he just not 100% open up to you about. It. Keep in mind. All right, so now this right here is a type. The first two were two signals. Now this one right here is a type. Now this type right here, we're going to call this person the denial. Um, he will do a lot of gay stuff. Like, I'm not gay. I'm not, with, I'm not with that gay shit, but then go and try to be with that gay shit. The, <sighs> baby. First things first, do not deal with the trade. The trade, they're going to steer from you. They're going to, ugh, it's a lot that going on with the trade. It's dangerous. They might wake up one day, be scared. Someone going to find out, go and murder you. It's a lot. It's a lot that come with it. I do not recommend going with the trade. And I know it's easier said than done. I want to sense, suggest do not deal with the trade. Especially when you're openly gay because guess what? Dealing with the trade is going to feel like, you know, you're being somebody's secret. It may be cute in the beginning, but after a while it gets old, you know? So yeah, the denial. That, that's the first type. Now, the next thing. Now, this is another thing, too. If he's a womanizer. Now, this is another sign. If he's a womanizer. Now, the reason why I say he's a womanizer, he's always going through women. Like, going through them bad boys like Pokemon cards. He's going through them, smashing them, going to having sex with this one, having sex with that one. He's doing all, all that. He's just going through. And the reason why I say this is a signal is because, a sign, is because sometimes men, the ailment, they're trying to satisfy an urge that they cannot satisfy. So sometimes they may sleep with a thousand women or how many women to prove that they are straight, to build up that their resume, their reputation. Oh, he can't be gay. You know, he slept with all these damn women. Oh, he can't be gay. You know, he did, 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 did this. He had her. He had her. He had her. But you got to realize this too. Sometimes they're trying to, they're trying to satisfy an urge that they can't satisfy. So just keep that in mind too. Now, another thing. I feel like this is a question I get a lot asked. My homeboys, my homegirls. How do you know if somebody is down low? I just seen somebody down low in the uh, subway right here. Because as soon as I walked in, he just started staring, like, staring, staring, like. And I'm like, hello, can I help you? Like, 
He just looked away though. Anyways, I'm just ordering my food. He walk out. He gave me like a little turn back, like, and I looked at him. I'm like, nah, he gotta be down low. He gotta be. He's still in the store though. But anyway, he had left though, but I'm still in the store though. I get my food. Anyways, I just walk out right now and I see him in the car just staring like, and I'm staring back like, what's up, bro? What you want? He over here like, it's kind of weird. I can't put it in perspective, but like, bro, like, it's just, I don't know, bro, but he just stared for too long. Like, your man stared at a man like, if you want it, come and get it. I ain't gonna play with it. Like, <laughs> Today, I'm going to be talking about how to spot a DL for my ladies because y'all be acting real oblivious and slow to shit when it comes to niggas y'all like. But can tell when somebody else gay. Today, I'm going to do like a little basic one, but I promise the more videos I do, the more juicy it's going to be. I promise. I promise. But let me start with the little weak shit first. Um, female friends. If that nigga got two or more female friends that he be with frequently, pretty fucking often, like they're like this. And he didn't have a relationship with them at all, like sexually. I hate to tell you this, boo. He's one of the girls. And then, if he only hang out with one nigga when he not around them bitches, or like, you know, like one or two, nine times out of ten, he fucking that nigga that he be with. That's not his friend. <laughs> now let's get into the big groups of niggas. If you see it like a big ass group of niggas, like five to ten of their ass, at least two out of the ten is gay. And one out of the five. And that's how I do math. But it usually be the extra goofy one for sure. Because shit, they're, they're most likely to be the first ones to talk to you out of any other nigga in that group. They're real friendly and they play gay all the time. Usually because they're really not playing. They're really just acting out how they want to live their life. That they just doing it in a joking matter. And the other one usually be some type of athlete in the group. Mm, most likely football. I'm just going off my experiences with niggas that I've had. Like, majority of my DLs be football players. I think I only had, like, one basketball player. But I don't know. Something about them football boys. They just real sus. I'm gonna keep it real brief and real respectful on this segment on how to spot a DL. Today we're gonna be talking about TNT, Twitter and transsexuals. If your man dated a transsexual, he's not straight because most transsexuals can't afford that penis removal surgery. And if they can, most of them can't even survive it. But if there is a lucky one out there that can do both, which there is, he's still gay. Men have a weird obsession with women that aren't really women. And that's not even to really bash transsexuals or nothing. But that's just the, the, the truth. Like, the hard, cold truth. Men like trannies, transsexuals. And that's where Twitter comes in. Go through that man's likes. Go through that man's bookmarks. You go see a lot of chicks with and all type of interesting things. Like, I guarantee you. Yo, what's going on, TikTok? It's your boy, Darren Uche, with another late night video. Tonight, I am here to remind everyone that one of the major signs for being DL is overt homophobia. This is homophobia that is uncalled for. Um, that doesn't make any sense. Like I mentioned before, homophobia, unfortunately, is cultural. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the issues that is found all throughout every culture, every country, even here in America, there's homophobia. But at the same time, too, and also that homophobia is a reflection of uh, the egoic mind. Humans are egotistic. Humans will always find a reason to tell you that, th that they're better than you. You know, I'm better than you because I'm white. I'm better than you because I'm a man. I'm better than you because I'm straight. I'm better than you because I'm Christian and so on and so forth. So on the surface level, that's human. Um, but I'm talking about overt homophobia, that 
it's it's so extreme that it's so uncalled for. Like, you know, even other straight dudes are like, dude, what the fuck? It's not that deep, bro. Chill. This is one of the major signs of being DL. Guys who are truly heterosexual, especially in this part of work, really don't care about your sexuality as long as two things are present. One, as long as you don't talk about gay stuff all the time. And secondly, as long as you don't hit on them. And sometimes, unfortunately, if it's a straight guy that has insecurities or has his own masculinity issues, you know, because again, hypermasculinity is such a big deal you know with the heteros and a lot of straight guys want to be super macho by all means um if it's a straight guy that is insecure about his masculinity unfortunately the third thing is they prefer that you're not effeminate you're not the stereotypical guy you know because uh, he's already dealing with his masculinity issues and then being associated with a effeminate uh, gay man especially in public could be you know a dig to his reputation um, again, this is this is usually a straight guy that is struggling with his own um, uh, masculinity. But if it's a straight guy that is confident in his own being, he really doesn't care if you're masculine or not. Again, to reiterate, straight guys, guys who are truly straight, don't care that much about your sexuality as long as two things are present. You don't hit on them and you're not talking about gay stuff all the time. And again, the third reason, if it's a straight man who is still struggling with his masculinity, then a lot of times they prefer that you are not effeminate. Again, this is just more like their own thing that they're dealing with, it has nothing to do with you. However, if it's a guy that is in the DL, he has this constant contempt for queer people or same sex, you know, all the time. A lot of times these are people who constantly bring up gay topics all the time. They're just constantly showing contempt for gay stuff for no just reason like dude it has nothing to do with you it's not that serious you don't have to talk about it out of sight out of mind but for some reason he keeps talking about it he keeps bringing it up and he sounds so angry and bitter and a lot of times it's actually out of jealousy because when he sees queer people living their lives authentically and doing their own thing there's a little bit of jealousy envy that he feels deep in the soul because to him these are people who are living their lives authentically and this is something that he wishes he could do but unfortunately he's not able to do it because some of the pains that he's not been able to deal through or deal with some of the societal norms that he's still has on his head that are keeping him chained this is why he's actually really jealous and he's really bitter like they say misery loves company and pain perpetuates itself so he's really miserable and he's trying to make you miserable to lower your vibration so you too are in misery with him because you know again misery loves company uh, pain perpetuates itself but i do want to add this though to all the queer people same gender loving people who are worried about discrimination by straight people. The thing is, confidence is your biggest weapon. If you work in yourself, if you work in yourself holistically and learn how to love yourself and know what your worth is and you bring your worth into the world, no one cares about your sexuality. Literally nobody cares. You know, your sexuality is just a tiny aspect of your being. Just like your skin color is a tiny aspect of your being. Your gender is a tiny aspect of your being. Your country of birth or, you know, any other thing is a very tiny aspect of your being. Your actual soul radiates so much confidence and the people who fuck with you for who you are would naturally gravitate. And this, this is nothing you need to ever worry about when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to how people perceive you because of skin color and all kinds of nonsense. The people who fuck with you regardless of fuck with you but the thing is you have to be confident in yourself first you have to know who you are first and this is why i always tell people to spend time take time to get to know yourself and heal that which lives within you again like they always say if you don't love yourself no one will ever love you and i mean that with all honesty if you don't work on yourself and become fully confident in your own being no matter what you do you'll always find fallibility the only people you'll ever attract in your life are people who are only tolerating you and not people who are actually loving and appreciative of you for who you are genuinely and authentically and to reiterate one of the major signs of being dl is overt homophobia homophobia unfortunately is a thing however a dl person who is overtly homophobic is very homophobic for no just reason all the time seeming so angry for no just reason and the second point that i made is true heterosexuals especially in this part of the world do not care about your sexuality especially if you have something to bring to the table you know if you're confident in yourself and there's something of value and of, of worth to you no one cares about your sexuality if two things are not present you're not talking about gay stuff all the time to them and you're not uh, making them uncomfortable by hitting on them and that's human you know and then thirdly if it's a straight guy that is working or uh, struggling with his masculinity he probably will prefer that you're not as effeminate because he does not want to be associated with somebody who is effeminate because that could be a dick to his um masculinity issues but that's his issues not your issue again working yourself confidence your confidence should be your only number one weapon to to walk into this world if you stand a chance to survive it anyway uche peace and love I understand y'all got some pretend to be out here.
having these young buck with these skinny jeans on pretending they in the hood and playing video games and be on a deal and all that there. All y'all got to do, all y'all women got to do is go up to the hood and pull up on him. Instead of just bashing him behind his back, pull up and see what he got going on. Because I'm going to share something with you. The real G's in the hood, the reason why they be hanging around the, the other G's in the hood all day and why they with their homeboys all day, that's how where the bag come in at. That's where your ear to the street set. Where you can hear what that bag coming in at when that bag leaving now that. Now he coming home with no bag and they always out there with his home is something wrong. You know what I'm saying? But a real triple OG like me, I'm out there in the streets with the homie cause that bag coming through. When I come home, she gonna see that bag spread it everywhere. It's all about the bag. If I stay at home, I don't have no edge to the streets. I won't get no bag. But I get around the homies, I can see where the bad's coming in at and the bad's going out at. I bet you I bring back that bag and I bring it back to her and she always invited to the hood to pop up on me at any given time. You know, that's for the real triple OGs. I don't know who faking and who doing what all they doing out there. But hey, just keep an eye out. Yeah, get you a triple OG. That's all I can say. I don't know who need to hear, but I know it's somebody. It's Pride Month, and a lot of my ladies normally have a tendency to ask me this question, especially during Pride Month. How do you know if he's gay? There's a lot of different scenarios I can tell you about, but this one always is at the top of the list for me. Ladies, if you know you are extremely beautiful, you know you got the body, you know you got the face, you know you are her, <laughs> Baby, he's using you as a cover-up. Mm -hmm. If he's always downing you, telling you that you're unattractive, that you, you're you not anything, that you're a piece of shh. Baby, he's using you as a cover-up. You know how people get shiny, sparkly things because it distracts from other stuff? Yeah, you're his distraction, babes. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. I thought I was going to have to empty the clip. And you ain't got to take my word for it, but I've had enough homegirls. How do you know your man's gay? Part two. Now y'all be mad at me for telling y'all these things. I don't care. I'm telling y'all so y'all stay out the apps. The apps are for us. The people that are out, okay? And this is primarily going to be for my Hispanic women and my Caucasian women. A lot of women in the black community are really not going to have to worry about this unless they, unless they didn't got a little bit slicker with it, okay? If it's just you and your significant other in your apartment or your house or whatnot, and you know you have those special sets of undergarments and they have magically just disappeared, baby, he's wearing them, okay? He's wearing them. Y'all gonna be like, Jay, now how do you know this? Listen, I had my my old phase at an early age, okay? So when they would get to my location and they go to pull them pants down and um, there's red Victoria's Secret on, I'm thinking, did you lie to me? Are you actually single? Are you undercover? Because where did you get these from? And since you got them on, bro, like, arch your back. How do you know your man's game? Part three. Now, if your man has a homeboy that he likes to hang out with heavily, heavily, and they like to sit and, you know, sip on some Mad Dog 2020, <laughs> yeah. and they like to start getting physical, like, I mean, like, they start wrestling and tussling and get, the wrestling, basically, in so many words. And I've always felt some type of way about that whole industry anyways. But, mm, baby, they, they interested in each other. They are interested in each other. I don't, I don't care what y'all say. I don't care. They've done something or they're interested in doing something with each other. And y'all ain't got to believe me. I'm just telling y'all my experiences. Y'all be like, I like your nails, Jay. How you get your nails? This is how this pinky nail got broke. Wrestling with somebody that secretly had feelings for me. How do you know your man may be gay? Part four. Now this is gonna ruffle some feathers in the football community. Um, this is the only type of backlash 
this topic I was worried about getting, but the rest of the stuff that y'all think that, oh my God, this is too much. No, I'm not done. This is Pride Month edition. I'll never do these videos ever again after Pride Month. So take what you need to take and do what you need to do with it. So let's get into it. Okay, straightforward. I'm, I like older guys. So you ain't got to worry about your little boyfriend. Um, Is your daddy single? You got you, you got to worry about me when it comes to your daddy type of ordeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what I've known over the last couple years that I attract older guys. And there are particular older guys that I attract. And they are very fond of a famous football team. Okay? Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. And like when I would go to the sneaky link or whatnot, um, they would have a designated room for their, you know, football memorabilia, the team that they like, you know, all that. Oh, I can't believe I'm getting ready to say this. They're always cowboy fans. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, but like I've always thought that was like a gay sport to me. Like who invented putting a bunch of masculine big thick dudes and some pantyhose and some jock straps and had them run up and down up <laughs> let's jump into my favorite part of all of the content i post on youtube and that's just my thoughts where i get to kind of express what i feel about whatever we have read or gone over so let's get into it all right ladies let's jump into this and i think this is a very relevant topic for any women out in the dating arena today because people can fool you very easily and it's not about someone's sexuality and their desire to have consensual relationships with other adults but the problem with especially in the african-american community in the black diaspora i would say overall is dl men are very prevalent and they can be very dangerous and I really want you to listen to this video again and take notes and really assess if you've seen any of these characteristics in present in your current relationships or in past relationships, because you want to be aware. Now, some of them were kind of just for jokes, but I really wanted to let the men speak on this one about some signs that women need to look for to spot if the man they're interested in or dating is DL, because it's important. The biggest concern I have and what I have seen actually with some clients and some friends is a safety issue. One of the challenges with men who are not honest about their sexual orientation, they are not living openly as gay. They are not, it's not about them just telling the world their business, not that, but they are actually using you as a beard and they're having sex with you many times. More often than not, those men are not using protection when they're having sex with other sexual partners, especially when they're having sex with men, because I've heard it said uh, by several gay men that using protection really then triggers in your mind, okay, this is a conscious effort, then I have to admit to myself that I am having sex with a man. There are men who do not want to do that, hence they are DL, hence they are closeted. Uh, one of my friends, one of my really good friends, he is a gay man, and he has told me about in his younger days, meaning like mid to late 20s, he really was... Um, hooking up with a lot of married men in his gym. These men are, you know, professional men. One was a doctor, one was a judge, one was a police officer. And he was saying they would hook up in like the steam room, the sauna rooms, etc. And these men were married and had children. Their wives did not have a clue. And he likes a very masculine presenting men. So I, who have very masculine mannerisms, um, not overt or crazy, but just you, these are not men that you would see. Cause I remember seeing some of these guys when I would visit him. Um, you would not necessarily make any connection to the men he was hooking up with being homosexual or bisexual at minimum. So you need to really be careful. You need to assess. This is not any homophobia or any phobia. This is about your safety and your protection. So I really want every woman who sees this and watch out for part two, because it's coming soon as well, to take notes and then just be more self-aware. Just be more aware of the type of men that you're dealing with. If you are dealing with somebody right now or dating someone, see if any of these things apply. Now, of course, 100% of these things don't necessarily apply. And just because a man may do one of these things doesn't necessarily mean that he is bisexual or closeted or gay. 
but it is something to take note of because safety is very important. And I have seen far too many times where there is a man who is presenting one way and living a life one way, but he's really wants to do something completely different. Once again, thanks to my gay bestie and some of his shenanigans <laughs> from, from years ago, he has, he has straightened his life up a little bit. So he does not hook up with married men anymore. So he says, but that was very telling when he, when he told me that. And then when I saw some of the men he was look, hooking up with, so this really struck a chord with me because this is something I have seen and not to this summer, I believe it was um, maybe a couple months ago, there was a man that went on a rampage and, you know, unalived his mother, his cousin, I believe, and one of his um, baby's moms because the his secret came out that he was closeted. He was on the DL. I don't know who exposed him. I don't know what happened. But then he ended up going on like a police chase. And I think, you know, he took himself out. But the point is, these are secrets these men are willing to kill for. So be careful out there, ladies. Thank you for joining me today for this episode of Ish I Saw on TikTok. Signs your man is on the DL, part one of two. Watch this video again. Really assess and measure some of the things you heard. Take notes, absolutely. And see how this measures up against maybe some of the men in your life or that have been in your life before or in your life now. And just be more aware. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I definitely suggest you send this one to your homegirl. If you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, check out the links below. Also, check out my podcast, The Successful Invisible, next season publishing soon on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Until next time, this is your relationship coach, Jane L, signing off.